Welcome back to the programme. Now, back in 2008, the artist Nicola Green was allowed behind the scenes during Barack Obama's presidential campaign, resulting in a stunning series of silkscreen prints called In Seven Days. Well, she just unveiled her latest work, ten years in the making, called Encounters, where again she's had astonishing access. This time she's been allowed to witness private meetings between the world's top religious leaders, interfaith meetings, largely unreported. The leaders of Christian, Muslim, Hindu, Sikh, Zoroastrian faiths, the Dalai Lama, humanist, Shinto, it is a very, very long list. And as you can see, Nicola joins me here in the studio. Welcome here to the programme. Tell me a little more about how this started, because uh, you said you saw the smallest of articles in a newspaper, is that right? Yes, I was sitting at the kitchen table reading the newspaper while I was having breakfast, and there was a tiny little piece um, saying that the Dalai Lama was coming to visit the then Archbishop of Canterbury, Rowan Williams, and that it was only the second time in history. That's all it said. And as an artist, I, you know, this really caught my attention. And there is that picture, because that meeting did take place. I mean, you said that when you made the request to officials, they probably thought it was preposterous, but you managed to they per did. persuade <laughs> them. It's a fantastic photo because uh, the Dalai Lama, is that right? He held Rowan Williams' hand right throughout that meeting. Well, to my astonishment, when I arrived, I was the only person other than the two of them in this two and a half hour long meeting. And they had put them on a sofa together and I was sitting on a chair. And they said they thought that that would be better for me to do my drawings and take my photos. But what happened was that in this two and a half hour meeting, a lot of which was not easy, they ended up holding hands the whole way through the meeting. And afterwards, I realized that you know, most meetings happen across a table. Um, and so symbolically bridging the divide, I mean, that was a start of it. Literally, yes. A and ten years, as I said, in the making, you met virtually every religious leader. You mentioned the, the sketching because you weren't allowed to record, but you could photograph, you could sketch. Uh, well, I wasn't allowed to write down the words, yeah. but I wrote them in pictures. <laughs> It's interesting because that gives you a responsibility almost to, to interpret yeah. those meetings, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And actually that's a huge amount of trust and is partly why this project has taken 10 years. Because um, I realised quite quickly that, that this was a new period in history, religious leaders meeting with each other, and that I was the only person chronicling this. And they'll be seeing just uh, some of the many, many photographs that you took because you put this uh, exhibition together. You say that this is relatively new in terms of these interfaith meetings going on behind the scenes. It rather reminded me of the elders, that political group that go uh, and do those meetings. We had Kofi Annan in the studio, Jimmy Carter, a very similar thing. But uh, you will know that in, in parts of the world, religion is problematic, even unfashionable. So, so why is this so important? What, what drew you in? Well, actually, 84% of the worlds, uh, you know, define themselves as having a faith, which is most of the world's population. And, uh, but, you know, there's a lot of conflict in the name of religion. And so I found it very interesting that for the first time in history, really, you know, these leaders are beginning, really over this last 10, 15 years, to meet with each other and share a platform together. And give me a sense of, of what those meetings were like in terms of content, because you never hear of mm. big announcements of what was agreed or anything like that. I think, you know, to be honest, what I saw was them working it out. I mean, literally, I was sitting in while they were beginning to have these conversations and work out, understand each other and work out how they were going to talk about each other in public without compromising the absolute truth of their own faith. That's a challenge. That's interesting because you, you've put together a book, you've also put together portraits of the leaders, 31 leaders. I mean, I'm going to get to the obvious question first because we're going to put that, those pictures on the screen of those portraits because they don't have faces, mm. so why? Well, I, well, there's two things really. I was very interested in the fact that when one of these leaders speaks out, they are speaking on behalf often of their own religion, not as them as an individual, not their own personal views, or that's how, you know, it, you know, it's important what they say. So I was really interested in that relationship that they have between what they think themselves and what they think on behalf of all their followers. And by painting out the faces, I was able to kind of, you know, explore that relationship. 
and also I wanted as a viewer for people to think about how they see themselves in relation to people that have completely different views and that's easier if you're not distracted by all the facial details whether you like someone or don't like somebody you can really think about the content of the of the portrait and there's incredible detail in all the back just very quickly because uh, we have a picture of uh, the former chief rabbi Jonathan Sachs also the leader of the the Zoroastrians tell me a bit more about both the the, the blue backdrop there and, and and the background there to the Zoroastrian leader I'm fascinated well Blue is the, uh, in, in uh, Judaism, blue is, is the most sort of revered colour. Um, and um, I think it comes from when Moses looked up at the sky. Um, or that's, you know, the story that is told. The Zoroastrian, um, the background in the Zoro Zoroastrian picture is taken from a tile from a Parsi household. And there's a little sort of person in a, looks like a flying boat and that is a symbol of good thoughts and good deeds and good actions. Just a quick word, we had uh, a look at the screens of the uh, Barack Obama sequence uh, earlier but it's interesting because this work here, the work you did back in 2008 uh, with the US President, I mean the constant themes run through both of it which is identity, religion, race, leadership, mm. uh, that's what you zero in on isn't it? I'm really interested in identity and in difference and how we sort of resolve those differences as human beings and, and telling the stories that are sort of going on in our world at the moment that we don't quite know what their effect will be and what will come next and I'm interested as an artist in chronicling that for future generations. Just a final thought because we've put some time lapse another part of your art exhibition that you've put together these perspex figures giant figures in your studio which you describe as wanting to be monastically silent as you go about your work it's fascinating watching it just emerge there <laughs> on the screen I mean with all of the backdrop that's going on Daesh Boko Haram the ethnic cleansing of Rohingya Muslims you know, deterioration in the Middle East. I mean, were you hopeful witnessing these meetings with all of that going on? Do you I, think we're making progress? Well, I think that's for... I've, I've chronicled, it, chronicled this and um, made a series of art uh, for people to look at and make up their own mind. But I think that, you know, it is a symbol of hope that these leaders who historically have always been in conflict with each other and almost enemies are actually sitting down and talking to each other and sharing platforms together. I think that is a move forward. My favourite photograph actually was uh, Ibrahim Mogra who was saying that he was there with the former Archbishop of Canterbury, the Bishop of uh, Bradford, saying, I love this photo because uh, there we are. I laughed my head off and that in a sense is all that underlines these meetings isn't it the physical actually being together mm. and actually being able to discuss these key issues Nicola we are out of time but thank you so much for your time and coming in to talk to us about this encounters uh, project that has taken 10 years of your time thank you so much I'm back with all the headlines here in a moment or two don't go away.